to my channel plant based storm i'm stormy and i want to come on here today and do a, another video on what i eat in a day um, y'all seem to really enjoy these videos and say that they're helpful so i think i'm going to try to for the most part put one out a week let me know what you think about that in the comments below and let's go ahead and dive right into it So I wanted some regular pancakes this morning, so I ended up using one and a quarter cup of regular flour and a quarter cup of oat flour that I had ground myself. You could probably use the entire thing for oat flour. I just wanted to use the regular flour that I had because it's malted and adds a nice flavor. Then for the liquid, it's two cups of milk. I used soy, use whatever plant milk you like, and then four tablespoons of maple syrup and a teaspoon of vanilla flavoring and then also going to add in two tablespoons of baking powder to help this rise okay so then you're going to go ahead and add the liquid into the dry ingredients and you're going to mix this up really well um, you're going to have to whisk it to get all of the little lumps and bumps out of it. And whenever you get this mixed up really well, you want to set it aside and let it combine for about three to five minutes. And then I ended up putting it on my panini maker. Um, I have this set on high, added in some blueberries for some extra delicious flavor. And whenever it starts to bubble really nicely, that's whenever you're going to want to flip it. Had to do a Mickey pancake for my little guy. He is in love with Mickey right now. And behold, some delicious, beautiful pancakes. And I will eat this with a 50-50 plate. The veggies were just a steamer bag that I popped in the microwave to make life easier, sprinkled with some garlic powder. So I thought that I would answer a question that I've been getting a lot and that is does my family eat the same way that I do and for the most part yes they do um, my husband uh, will have some dairy like cheese and stuff here and there but he actually doesn't even drink cow's milk anymore I guess because we have been using plant milk for so long now he doesn't like the taste of it anymore um, my son does uh, drink soy milk because he does not have an allergy to regular milk but he does have a sensitivity to it and they both are not a hundred percent plant-based but for the most part yes they do they eat what I cook and I don't cook extra or special meals typically I always include something on my kiddos plate that I know that he will enjoy eating whether that is pasta or a piece of peanut butter toast or um, some kind of fruit that he loves um, especially whenever he's trying new things on his plate I always try to include something like I said that he loves and that he feels comfortable with so there's at least one thing that I know he will eat and just like any other toddler he has his moments where he eats what he wants to and he doesn't eat what he doesn't want to and I don't force him to eat because I feel like he will actually eat whenever he's hungry what I'm trying to do is lay the foundation for eating healthy and giving him him the power and control to make decisions which will empower him later on I truly believe in making good decisions whenever he's older and try not to be so rigid so like if he's out with his grandparents or something like that then I don't try to control what he eats and he has things on special occasions at birthday parties and I just let that go because it's part of life and you have to enjoy other things sometimes and being a part of the social interaction with other kids is important so that's the way that we do that around here so let's go ahead and have a look at lunch I can't wait to show you so I'm adding in a half a cup of veggie broth to two whole onions a half a shallot and two cloves of garlic that i had diced up and i'm cooking till they are nice and translucent and tender and then i just added in half a teaspoon of thyme which you can add to taste i have discovered that the thyme is very very delicious in this recipe and then two pounds of mushrooms sliced and i'm going to mix that in after the 
um, onions had become translucent and tender and I'm going to put the lid on that and let that water cook out of the mushrooms. I had the temperature on high to get the onion started and then turn it down to a medium to allow the mushrooms to sweat um, and get the water out. I pulled the lid off and you can see after several minutes this is all water that has come directly from the mushrooms. You want to just continue cooking this until it cooks off. Several minutes later, the liquid has cooked off and I am now adding in a half a teaspoon of salt and going to mix that in. You can do this to taste as well. After the liquid has completely cooked off, it's time to add in the flour. So I end up using three tablespoons of oat flour that is just ground up in my blender. And then I'm gonna mix that in really well and cook it for a few minutes to allow it to kind of soak up the extra liquid and incorporate well with the mushrooms. Once that's done, you wanna go ahead and add in three cups of vegetable broth. And then you wanna really mix in uh, the vegetable broth and mushrooms together to kind of get the uh, soup to begin to thicken up because you've added in the flour and you want to bring this up to a nice bubble Once that is nice and incorporated you want to go ahead and add in one cup of plant milk And I add in just a tad of milk to go ahead and kind of cool down the whole um, Skillet and then I'll add in the rest of the milk and stir it all in and then I'm going to bring this back up to temperature um, but I'm going to do it a little slower this time and just kind of have it simmering on a medium um, heat so that it doesn't uh, get too hot for the milk. Next, I'm adding in some cashew cream that I made using a quarter cup of cashews and a half a cup of vegetable broth. This just adds a little bit of flavor and fullness uh, fat to the dish. You can leave this out if you're allergic to nuts or you don't want the extra fat. It'll be just as good without it, but I think it just kicks this up a notch because this is typically made with a heavy cream and whatnot and trying to keep this whole food plant-based. I decided to add in a little bit of cashew cream and it was really delicious in this and then after you've added all the ingredients in you just want to gently simmer this for 10 minutes and it will be ready I decided to pair the mushroom soup with a simple salad so it's just some simple greens a cucumber a tomato and a little bit of green onion and then I did the mandarin balsamic mixed with the whole grain mustard and water all equal parts and tossed all of the salad in the dressing with a little bit of pepper on it and served it up with a probably a cup of the mushroom soup and it was an amazing and delicious lunch and a great change. Okay guys, so another question that I get a lot of is, do I think it is okay to eat things like Beyond Burger or other vegan products? And absolutely, I think it's totally fine. You are the one that is in control of your plate. And if it is gonna be something that helps you transition from the standard American diet to eating whole food plant-based, and this is your bridge that you need in order to eat more whole foods, then absolutely go for it. And if it is what you need to help you continue and move forward, then do what it is that you need to do. Hey y'all, up next is a whole food plant-based broccoli and cheese casserole. Can't wait to show you this. Sauteing a small onion and getting it nice and translucent. And then I'm also steaming two whole heads of broccoli and making cheese sauce to go with it all at one time. It's eight ounces of potatoes, one carrot, and a whole onion. Boil that and steam simultaneously. I have also so previously cooked a cup and a half of um, rice in the Instapot. We use brown rice and I'm just going to put that into the baking dish and then get ready to mix in and add all of the other ingredients to this delicious casserole. Okay, go ahead and add in the cooked onion. Oh, and make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And go ahead and add in the two heads of broccoli into the rice mixture. 
Next, we're gonna go ahead and get the cheesy sauce ready. So I'm just gonna add in the veggies that we just got through boiling into the mixer. And to that, I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of garlic, one teaspoon of onion powder, and a, a quarter cup to a half cup of nutritional yeast. I end up using a quarter cup. And then I'm gonna add in whatever water that I boiled the veggies in that I need to get the correct consistency for the sauce and then just blend it all up and add salt to taste. Once the cheese sauce comes together, you wanna just pour in the desired amounts. And then I'm also going to put in the cream of mushroom that we have left over from lunch, which I purposely made more than I needed so that I would have it specifically for for this recipe and I end up using two and a half cups of the cream of mushroom in the casserole and then mix everything up and then you're going to put it into the oven with a covered lid or foil and cook it for 30 minutes until it is bubbly and delicious. Once it has cooked for 30 minutes, take it out and remove it from the heat and it is ready to serve. And I always like to pour a little bit of extra cheese sauce on mine and make it super creamy and feels extra indulgent. Okay, y'all, can we just talk about that casserole real quick? Let's stop and think about all the vegetables that was in the casserole. Had shallot, garlic, onions, and mushroom just in the soup. And then we also had more onion, and then we made the cheese sauce so that had potatoes and carrots and another onion we got lots of onions in there um and we also had all of that broccoli wow that was a lot in that one recipe i hope that you enjoyed that and as always thank you so much for watching